Good afternoon, church. Wow, what? Whew. That's that's amazing. I don't even know where to, you know, how to up, uphold that wonderful spirit. It's not easy, you know. It has to be something amazing here today. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. And all the time, how many are excited to be in the presence of God? Hallelujah. How many just love church so much? Isn't this the best place to be at? Hallelujah. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. I'm so happy to be here and to be part of what's going on here. Before I go into the message, I would just like to quickly share with you something that I feel like God showed me a couple of weeks back and I've been thinking about it. I've been sharing it with a couple of people and I just feel like um, when it comes to revival across the globe and when the Spirit of God moves across the, the earth, we, we normally say or, or I, I like to think that the Spirit of God kind of moves in waves across the, the globe. Like there's a wave of a particular kind of revival that kind of sweeps over the face of the earth. And it takes a couple of years for that wave to move. And then Holy Spirit changes his, his way of, of manifesting himself in churches around the world. And then comes a new wave with a new kind of movement. And each of these waves, of course, is, is from God Almighty. And, and I feel like a couple of years back that there was a very strong wave of worship and, and praise and worship that really swept across the globe. And, and many churches was, was, you know, front runners of that wave. And, and, and the body of Christ really came back to worship and praise. And, and, and a lot of miracles and things started happening during worship. And, and now there's another wave sweeping across the globe. And I feel like this wave that is going on right now is a wave of the Word of God, where the body of Christ is really coming back to its roots to, to go into the Word of God, where you can see across the globe, messages coming up that challenges the very fundamental truths of what we believe in Jesus Christ and things that just, you know, encourages the body of Christ to come back to the body of Christ, to, to Jesus Christ, the root source. And I feel like in the next few years to come, a, another wave is coming. And the thing is with these waves of the Holy Spirit, each time that the Holy Spirit expands and, and, and changes his way of moving on earth, that he's always been the same, but he still is new every morning. Hallelujah. So every time a wave sweeps across the globe, what was in the old wave carries on into the new wave. So first was the wave of worship a couple of years back, and then now is the wave of word of God, which worship is still part of it. And I feel strongly the wave is coming, and it's like it's, it's, it has started bubbling kind of in the mind of God, and I feel like it's the next wave that is going to come. And I feel really strong there's going to be a wave of the power of God, where we're going to see the power of God moving in a way that we have never seen before. <laughs> We have seen the waves of worship and praise. We have seen the waves of the Word of God. And the next wave that is coming is the power of God. We're going to see healing and deliverances in ways that we never thought could happen. And I strongly believe that this church, Hungry Generation, is going to be right there to spread that wave. To, to make sure that the move of God reaches all four corners of the world in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And... and uh, I, I feel it in my heart very strongly. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's get into it. How many people here uh, like my shoes today? <laughs> I, I really appreciate you guys. Some of you were in the first service. I said the exact same thing, but you still shout as if you're hearing it for the first time. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> I, I've been trying to wear these shoes for quite some some months actually and, and my wife have told him no not yet keep those shoes in your closet a little while longer <laughs> so you know you don't want to appear as if you're you know too flamboyant or <laughs> you're you're not an artist or anything like that you're a, you're a, you're someone that preaches the humility of god and all that so <laughs> So I've been obedient, I've kept it in the closet, but today finally I, I suggested it and she said, yeah, today, today works, you can, you can have them today. <laughs> the reason why I'm wearing them is to distract you guys from something else uh, on my body. It's, I actually had a, a little bit of an injury a couple of days back, so hallelujah, all in the work of God, <laughs> right? 
it wasn't quite, but still, I'm just going to share it with you quickly what happened. In case you're wondering when I'm, if I'm like praying and like, what, what is that on his arm? Is he, it's not a stay, it's just a little bit of a bandage. I, I'm a carpenter by profession. So during the weeks, I'm a carpenter just like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Following in his footsteps all the way. And so at work, I was out working on Thursday with my, with my colleague Dwayne. And, you know, we have nail guns, we have saws, we have all kinds of really dangerous equipment and tools that can really hurt you. Those of us who work in construction, you know exactly what you're talking about. You know, you need to cut something really small and your finger is too close to the saw and it's a little bit uncomfortable and all that. But I've been covered with the blood of Jesus. Nothing serious has happened to me. On Thursday, though, I was covered with the blood of Jesus as well. We had finished work and I was actually at lunch and um, so this, this work injury happened during lunch and we were, <laughs> w- <laughs> it's a serious one though, it's, it's, so um, we had avocados that we were going to have on the side of, of lunch so, and being in a construction site there's no kitchen tools or anything so I used a box knife to cut open the avocado and the, I think the sticker on the avocado made the knife to, to like slip and I cut myself in my wrist. So long story short and eight stitches later, here I am. Glory be to Jesus Christ. God is alive. And today we're talking about healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. So just a fun story. Make sure that you're careful when you're cutting your avocados. Today we're going to talk about healing. We are still on the sermon series, Divine Healing. And I believe that God Almighty has something special in store for you today. I believe that God Almighty is the same yesterday, today and forever. He was and is and is to come. And what happened in the times of the Bible, what happened in old times past, it's still happening. God Almighty is the same. He wants to move in your life. He wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. And He's ready to do that today in Jesus name the Bible says that he brings good tidings to the poor that he heals the brokenhearted he uh, breaks open the prison doors for those who are in bondage praise God and I believe that God Almighty is going to do that in our lives today in Jesus name he's the reason we are gathering here today and you are the reason that he is here hallelujah he is here today to meet you and it's because you came that's why he showed up Because he knows that you love him and you need him and he's here for you today. Whatever you need may be, he's going to meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' name. Praise God. Healing through deliverance is what we're going to talk about today. We know that there are several ways that you can receive healing, so to speak. And what we're going to talk about today seems like more often than not, somehow I'm involved in something that has to do with deliverance. It's, I've had some experience in it I'm not the most experienced ever but I have witnessed tens of thousands of deliverances throughout my life and I have seen both a lot of crazy and different kind of things that many people don't even think is real but it actually is many of the things we see in the movies it's real many of the things that happen in the world around today and things that we hear in in stories and old fables is actually real it's it's the spiritual realm and it's very real so today we're going to talk about especially how you can receive healing through deliverance in, if you go through the chronicle um, timeline of Jesus' uh, earthly ministry in the four Gospels, there are about between 25 and 30 instances where Jesus Christ heals or resurrects one or more people. Out of those instances, about 20% of them, 15 to 20%, happens through deliverance. There is people that receive healing from epilepsy after a demon is cast out. There's people that receive healing from mental problems and mental disorders after demons are cast out. And there are people that are healed from being, being deaf and mute after demons are cast out. These are the examples that we have in the book of the, in the Gospels. And I have many more experiences of people that actually receive healing both from heart conditions, hypertension, diabetes, the most simple things 
evil spirits can be the cause of it. If we read in the Bible, we can see that there are primarily three main reasons to why you or I don't receive our healing when we pray. Three main reasons. And it's all stated in the Bible. In fact, in Matthew 9, if you want to follow me there, in the book of Matthew 9, all these three different reasons are stated after each other. And the first one is sin. Second one is your faith. And third one is evil spirits. There are other conditions where, for example, there's a woman that was sick from birth. And Jesus said it's for the glory of God that she's receiving her healing today. It was not because of any of these other reasons. Nonetheless, these are the three main categories of, of reasons why people do not receive the healing. Some people simply live in a life of sin. And if they receive a healing... Before they even get to walk in your healing, you're already back. Because sickness is just like anything else. If you don't make a change in your life, it may come back again. Someone that has been diagnosed by a doctor with lung cancer, for example, and, and the doctor says, you have to stop smoking. And they stop smoking, they go for prayer, they receive a healing, and then they go back to smoking. It's very likely, and they're prone to get that back again. It's simply because of the life that they live. We also have those that have troubles receiving because of their faith. The Bible says that when Jesus went to his hometown, it was difficult for people to receive because they didn't have faith. They didn't believe. They said, I know him. I know he sleeps in on Saturdays. How can he be a man of God? How can he be the son of God? I know that he doesn't know how to spell this. He, he doesn't like... Whatever, you know, when you know the person too, lo too good, it's difficult for them. It was difficult for them to have faith in him because of that. Thirdly, is the topic that we're going to talk about today, which we can read about in Matthew 9, verse 32. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man mute and demon possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke, and the multitudes marveled, saying, I have never seen anything like this in Israel. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. That means that after the evil spirit that was tormenting that man's life was cast out, he could speak. In this place, the Bible says, and, and Jesus Christ encourages us that we should use, put, use this, uh, put the word to use in our own life. Insert your name where the message is per, uh, personal. So for example, here in this place, it's very easy for us to, to begin to say that, okay, the issue I'm having, whatever it may be, whether it's from demons or not, I'm going to get free from it. Hallelujah. And begin to proclaim the word of God over your life. It's very important not to speak on the level of your old life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We are going to talk about the spirit of sickness here. There is a spirit of, of sickness that many times torments people and, and Christians today. And I've seen it many times. There are people, many times the spirit of sickness cannot come straight with sickness into your life. It always starts first with the fear of sickness. There are people in your midst, I, many of us know them around us, and they are constantly afraid of sickness. They are afraid that, oh, oh this, this is not normal. I'm not sure what's going on with me right now. Oh, this is, this is what they said. They said that on, online, it said that this could be this symptom and this, it could be this. And you are constantly afraid of sickness, afraid of accidents, afraid of that. And because of that, it builds a stronghold in your mind. The fact of the matter is that the devil cannot attack you and get a grip of your life unless you let him. And by sowing a seed of fear and negative thoughts, that is how evil spirits of sickness can enter your life and actually plant the same exact sickness you're afraid of in your life. And when it happens... You know what will happen? I've seen those people many times. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was coming. Yeah, you knew it was coming and here it is. Why did you know that it was coming? 
Why can't you know that by His stripes you are healed? Why can't you know that that sickness is not part of your body? It's important to realize that you cannot continue to have those thoughts, to harbor those thoughts in your life. The Bible says in the book of Job that Job was a, a holy man and, and God was bragging of him and saying that this man will never betray me. And then the devil said, well, let me attack him with some sickness and other things and see if he will not turn from you. Now listen to this very, it's a very important thing that is going on right here. When it comes to sickness that was caused by evil spirits, that type of sickness, the purpose of it is not for you to be sick. The purpose of it is for you to turn away from God. That's the reason why spirits attack you with sickness. So that you will say, why me? God, I've served you all my life. Why is this happening to me? No, God, I'm telling you now, if you don't heal me, I'm going to look for another God. Hallelujah. You know, someone that was tempted with that exact situation, it was the three men in the book of Daniel 3. They were tempted to follow the system around them and to kneel to something else and say, yeah, I knew it was coming. I knew, I knew that this sickness would come sooner. My mom has it. My grandmom has it. My grandpa has it. From the beginning, I knew. And now I lay my life before you. But in the book of Daniel 3, I want to read it actually for you. It's, it's such a powerful passage. The book of Daniel 3, if you can go there with me. See, you will probably find it before me. The book of Daniel 3. And I'm going to read from Daniel 3, verse 16. These were the three men that were together with, with Daniel, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king have told him that you must kneel to this other God. You must accept the thoughts of sickness in your life. You must give in to the symptoms you're feeling in your body. You must or else something worse will happen to you. And they answered to him and said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand O king and this next verse <laughs> this next verse is the one that gets me i can i love this verse and it says but if not let it be known to you O king that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up this simply means whether god heals me or not he is my healer whether he delivers me or not he is my deliverer whether he takes me out of this situation or not I will never turn away from my God. He can and He will. Hallelujah. 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 So when you are wondering, is this sickness caused by evil spirits or not? And you come to a man of God and you ask, I'm wondering, is this sickness from evil spirits or is this from my lack of faith or is this from you know what you don't have to know where it came from all you need to know it does not belong when a thief enters your house and steals things who would ask the thief, excuse me where did you come from before you entered my house no you say you thief get out of my house that is sickness to you and I. 
we don't need to know where it came from whether it was cost of this or that or this or that all we need to know is that when we go for a test we will know hallelujah I'm going to take a few questions that many people have asked me. And I'm just going to go through them briefly here because we're going to have a wonderful time of prayer here in in a minute. We know that many of us have come here today. Some of us have physical issues that we need healing from. Some of us have emotional issues that we need healing from. Some of us have mental issues that we need healing from. Strongholds in our minds and different kind of thoughts. Thought patterns that have become part of our life that we can't break by ourselves those kind of things they're gonna break today it's the beginning of something and we don't the devil knows that the earlier that he can kill your faith when it's in its most weakest form the easier it is so we too know (laughs) the earlier you can catch that spirit of sickness out of your life the easier it's gonna go away the longer it's been there, the more you're going to be like, oh, but this is part of me. How, how is it going to work? It's been like this for 20 years. But if it's just coming to its... That's what we are here for. We're here to just quench that before it gets any power in your life. Hallelujah. few questions that people have asked me over time. They, they used to ask, how would you know? I'm wondering, how can I know that I'm demon-possessed? How do I know if someone has a demon? And, and I like to say that, it, especially like in a family unit, many times I've seen people coming and, and a family member is having a terminal disease. And they say that it's demonic, they need deliverance. And we would pray for the person and nothing would happen. And then we would pray for the person that brought them. And then an evil spirit would manifest and say, I caused that sickness. And then people will say, oh, so you're the wicked one in this relationship. But it's not about that. You know, a family is a unit. The Bible says that the two shall become one. That means that when the devil attacks your family, either with sickness or with disunity, strife or fighting and arguments, it's not one person. It's not about who is it that is possessed. The demons and the evil spirits are attacking the family as a unit. Sometimes evil spirits is not even in any one of them. But they can jump and influence whoever they have power over at that moment. Because the moment that you as a Christian yield very strongly to emotions. Too too strong emotions in any way. I'm talking about when it's the most highest emotion. We, We talk about when you get very angry or when you get completely devastated. You open yourself up. Subconsciously, your spirit opens up. And it's saying, whatever is here, I don't know who, but I need comfort in any way. And many times that is when demons will attack a family unit and they can jump from one to the other. So if a family is having a problem or someone is sick in a family and they say they need deliverance and it's this one is demon possessed or this one is the worst one. We look at them and we say, you know what? You guys, you are one. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So don't think that this one or this one, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it's from. Hallelujah. All we know is that when the thief comes in, they have to come out. Praise God. Another thing that I want to quickly share with you as well is that many times an evil spirit of sickness can actually be in a particular part of your body. Literally. A demon can occupy a leg. It can occupy a hand. It can occupy your eyes. It can occupy your mouth. That's why when we pray for people many times, we lay hands on those places. And I've seen it myself. Someone who has come and they are manifesting, but they are resisting the power of God. And then you ask them, you say, where is your power? And they say, I have powers in my eyes or in my tongue or wherever. That's where their headquarters is in your body. And many times when it comes to sickness, sickness, that spirit can sit in your back. It's not only that, oh, the demon possesses our heart. It's some kind of vague, invisible thing. It 
actually sits in a part in your body. You can have pain in your back and it's literally a demon that is attacking your back constantly. You can have pain in your eyes, in your head, in your shoulders. That's the place they are striking you. We need to understand that the spiritual is not as overly supernaturally that we cannot understand it. The spiritual is just like here but invisible. The demon cannot just be floating around everywhere. He sits somewhere in your body. When you're having pain here, that's because the demon is right there. We need to pray for that demon to come out so that your back pain can go away. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to share one, one more experience that I've had and then we're going to go into a time of prayer. We have some really loaded prayers for you today. We believe that a lot of things are going to come crumbling down today in the name of Jesus. As you are sitting down right now, even begin to just prepare your heart for what God has in store for you. This place, this place is an embassy of heaven. <laughs> if you come here and you have any kind of darkness in your backpack, oh, you're going to go through x-ray. Trust me. We don't allow any foreign objects in this place. Hallelujah. No foreign objects. People used to ask me and say, like, how can you tell if someone is, if someone is like under the move of the Holy Spirit? How can you know if this person right now, is it the Holy Spirit that is moving? Is it demon that is moving? Or what is it that is moving? And, and it's one of the questions that a lot of people want to know. And they're like, why? It looks, but I don't know. How can you know? That's the thing. You don't need to know. You don't need to know. When someone comes to a doctor and says, I feel like I'm having some pain. The doctor won't look at you and say, yeah. Yeah, I would say that that's probably your liver that is causing trouble. Or maybe your kidney. They run tests. And that test will confirm what problem you have. So also, you run tests. To screen your spiritual life. Let your spirit go through an x-ray to see. Is there anything there in my body right now? Or in my spirit that is a little bit wrong? And that x-ray is very simple. It's not about any man that is standing here. That x-ray is that when you come to God and you say, God, I need a touch from you. And someone lays a hand on you upon the authority of the name Jesus Christ. That works as an x-ray on you. So if you are wondering, oh, is this sickness caused by this or that? Well, come for prayer and you'll find out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. One of the things that I hear more than anything else is people that say that, oh, I don't want to go up there and... You know, what if something happens and I start manifesting or something? But don't you understand that it's a good thing? Get, get it out. Who wants to have a full backpack full of stuff? And you say, well, I don't want to put it off my back because in case there's ugly stuff in there. Who cares? Nobody in this place is going to uh, ask or tell you that, oh, you're so dirty. If not for Jesus... Every single one of us is dirty. No one, no one, no one is worthy of His presence if not for His grace. That is why when we come in here into His presence and you receive prayer, whatever happens, put it aside you. Nobody cares. All we care about is those who could not see before, they can now see. Those who were formerly in bondage, now they are free. Those who were formerly sick, now they are walking. That is the God that we serve and that is what we are here for today. Hallelujah. I want you to rise up to your feet right now. Time has come for us to pray. So we're going to invite the worship team in right now. We're just going to spend a few minutes in His presence and just welcome the Holy Spirit and prepare your heart. Prepare your heart for what God has in store for you today. There is something here that is about to happen. Some of us come here and you feel just tired. Some of us are feeling anxious. You have anxiety attacks, feeling depressed and fatigue. Whatever it may be, we don't care where it came from. All we know is that you're going to go live here a different person. 
So right now as we begin to worship, just prepare your heart to me and to pray in your heart to God. Whatever you have in store for me today, Lord, meet me at the point of my need. I don't really care how it came to pass. All I want to know is that I'm going to walk out of here a different person. Hallelujah. Begin to lift him up in this place and say, There is power in the name of we believe that there is. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 break every chain. Power in His blood. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. There is power in the name of Jesus. going to pray together the Bible says in the book of Joshua 6 that God instructed the priests of God to walk around the walls of Jericho for six days and he told them just walk around them in prayer don't open your mouth in this church we are a living church we believe in the Word of God we have an intercessory team that has been praying for this day for six days. They have been praying this whole week for today. Because the Bible says, God instructed on the seventh day, ask all the people of God to come together and walk majestically. And when they in one spirit and in one accord, open their mouth and shout out the shout of victory. The walls of Jericho will come crumbling down. Today is your day for the problems you have in your life to come crumbling down. Right now, we want to agree with you in prayer in the name of Jesus. Open your lips right now and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. By your power and by your blood. Let the foundations 
of my problems crumble down crumble down crumble down walls of sickness walls of oppression walls of bondage in the name of Jesus come crumbling down pray right now in the name of Jesus every wall of Jericho in our life sickness and disease we command you to be broken in the name of Jesus your word said that when we come together they will come down in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every wall of sickness and disease we command you to be broken we command you to be broken we command you to be broken in the name of Jesus open your lips and begin to pray right now in Jesus mighty name we break every foundation of sickness and disease we uproot you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Bible says that we are the sons of light and every light expels the darkness and right now we're going to command every demon that's hiding in this place that's hiding behind your situation behind your pain and behind your sickness that's hiding in your body to come out in Jesus mighty name we're going to exercise that authority that is given to us in Jesus name and we're going to command every darkness every demon and every curse behind your suffering to leave once and for all in Jesus mighty name are you ready to pray church are you ready to pray church say you demon say you demon behind my pain behind my sickness say where are you hiding in my body right now in Jesus name out 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 say come out from my body in Jesus name say you demon of infirmity where are you hiding in my body out 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 come out in Jesus name right now take your finger and begin to command that demon that's hiding in your body behind that sickness and pain and command it out command it out command it out I take authority over every demon hiding in this place hiding in any body right now in this place I command you loose your grip I command you loose your grip I command you out in Jesus name you have no place you have no authority in this place this is our read of liberty and every demon that's hiding every demon of infirmity every demon of sickness and pain I command you loose your grip and come out in Jesus mighty name Jesus in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ right now we're gonna begin to attack the thoughts the spirit of fear that what if this, this is going to happen? What if this sickness? What if I'm going to die from this because my daddy died? What if this happens because in my family, the spirit of fear and the spirit of sickness to be broken over your life, over your marriage, over your family, over your generation. I want you right now to take that spirit and begin to command it that its power be broken over your life. I want you to repeat after me say, you spirit of fear be broken in my life in my family in my generation in my health in Jesus name so you spirit of sickness be broken in my life in my family in my generation in Jesus name come on open up your lips and begin to break that spirit of fear those thoughts of sickness those thoughts of you dying out of this disease because somebody died in your family begin to break its power in Jesus mighty name you spirit of sickness you spirit of cancer you spirit of death you spirit of mental disorder you spirit of heart disease you spirit of diabetes you spirit of sickness be broken in my life be broken in my family be broken in my generation in Jesus mighty name begin to break its power right now begin to break its grip anywhere it's at in your family in your body in your health in Jesus name in the name of Jesus we pray thank you father for your grace the Bible says that Jesus came to heal those oppressed by the devil you know for some of you maybe standing here those of you who are Christian you may say man what is all this demon chasing you know healing doesn't take all of that uh, you know just because you have a fever doesn't mean you have a demon you're wrong 
the Bible says Jesus didn't heal Peter's, mo Peter's mother-in-law. He says he rebuked the fever. Why do you need to rebuke a fever? You need, behind that fever, I'm not saying behind every fever, but behind her fever, there was a demon. A woman had a problem with her back. Now, a chiropractor, the Bible says, he says, Satan bound her for 18 years. Christian, good old lady, coming for 18 years to church. Problem with her back. And you would look at that and say, oh, this is just a lower back pain or some kind of a hump. And, but Jesus saw beyond that. It doesn't mean that every person had a demon. But it does mean Jesus healed those who were oppressed. Whether you got a demon or not, sickness is demonic oppression. When you have even a running nose, it's oppression. <laughs> okay, you're missing work, it's oppression. And so it's affecting your, your health. And so I don't want you, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build within you a healthy, holy resistance toward the sin, toward sickness, and toward the devil. Can somebody say amen? And, uh, and for those of you who are offended inside because you're so defensive of sickness, what does sickness do to you that you defend it so much? For those of you who's like, man, that's, a, that's my little pet. I just pray to God for His mercy to help me handle that sickness. You're such a hypocrite. On Monday morning, you're popping pills like there's no tomorrow. And on Sunday morning, you're standing there thanking God for that little sickness. If you're so thankful for sickness, why do you take medicine? Stop being a hypocrite. Be real. Sickness is not good. You know that because you're taking medicine. Because you're trying to get rid of it. You go to the doctor, you're trying to get rid of it. That's a good thing. You try to, if it hurts, you right away say, Lord, help me. You know, if it didn't work, you, you still say, Lord, help me. So I just want to ask you, let's be real. If on Monday through Saturday, we seek every medical help against that, let, let's not be all religious and crazy on Sunday, standing there and say, Lord, just help me to endure it. No, 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 no. Lord, help me to get rid of it. I don't like it. I don't want it. I want to serve you fully. I want my whole body to praise Jesus. I want my body to be used for Jesus. Come on somebody. Now if you are ill, we're not saying that because you have a sin in your life. If you are ill, we're not saying that because you have no faith. But I like what Rickard said. The devil will use your sickness to try to distract you from the Lord. To say you don't need to pray now. You don't need to go to church. Why? Because your pinky hurts. This hurts or that hurts. But today we have greater on our side. It's Jesus Christ. I want you to take communion elements right in front of you. We're going to celebrate the death of Jesus today. And by thus, we're going to proclaim our faith in His work and in His activity on this earth, especially for our healing. Pull the, the top layer and you're going to find the wafer. And take it. As you take that wafer right now, take it by faith. Go ahead. You can take that wafer already inside. That speaks of the broken body of Jesus for you, for your healing, for your breakthrough. Jesus was whipped so that you will be whole. So emotionally you will be whole spiritually you will be whole and physically you will be whole and then you can drink that that juice because that's for your redemption that's for the forgiveness of our sins if you are not right where you're supposed to be with the Lord right there the blood of Jesus can cleanse you right now the blood of Jesus can cleanse you as you do that right now we're gonna offer a prayer for the Lord to touch our body for the stripes of Jesus to manifest for the promise of Jesus to manifest as you have taken that communion Lord I just pray I want you to place your hand upon the part of your body where you experience infirmity or you experience pain it doesn't matter how many times you prayed for your healing already I want you to pray for it today like it's for the first time it doesn't matter if you have a doctor's appointment schedule and you already got approved for your medical treatment that's not what this is all about we're not disregarding that what we're saying is that right now we're gonna look to Jesus with your hand upon the part of your body where it ails you father in the name of Jesus as we have taken this communion, we remind ourselves that by the blood of Jesus we've been forgiven and by the body of Jesus we've been healed. Right now we agree with your word that your word says God that Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted and that Jesus heals the sick. He's Jehovah Rapha my healer. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He sent his word and he healed them. And Lord we release your word right now into every person who has a problem with their body as they keep their hand upon that part I pray that your fire will go that the blood of Jesus is going to break curses that the blood of Jesus is going to minister healing that the blood of Jesus is going to bring hope
that the blood of Jesus will bring heat and fire into that part even those watching on live stream I minister God's word right now to you receive God's healing in Jesus mighty name be healed in your eyes be healed in your ears be healed in your back be healed in your spine be healed in your organs be healed in your fluids and your blood be healed in your joints be healed in your ears be healed in your private parts be healed of every growth and every tumor and every single cyst in Jesus mighty name come on right now keep your hand there and just right now sing that sing that song over your body sing that song over your health sing that song over your knees sing that song over your bones that the blood of Jesus is speaking better things than the blood of Abel right now the blood of Jesus is doing the speaking on your behalf even if you're addicted to something say Jesus blood Jesus blood speak for me Jesus blood speak for me right now Jesus blood never fails of me Jesus blood never fails Father, we receive your mercy, we receive your grace, we receive your grace, receive your healing right now. This whole week we've been praying for you that when this prayer is offered, you will experience God's mercy, that you will experience God's grace. Some of you, you need to move your body, push on that part right now. Begin to, begin to receive that in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, because God's healing touch is coming in this room. God's presence is in this room in the name of Jesus Christ every head bowed and every eye closed if you're in this room today and you have not yet made a decision to give Jesus your whole life maybe you're like a young lady that shared you find yourself in a cycle of sin or a cycle of abuse maybe you find yourself in a cycle of pain a cycle of emptiness or perhaps on the outside everything looks good but your eternal soul is crying out there is a God-shaped hole inside of you that only God can fill. Religion can't fill it. Good works can't fill it. Only God can fill it. And that can only happen if you repent of your sin. You put your faith in, Je faith, put your faith in Jesus and you trust in Him for your salvation. Jesus is waiting for you. He already did the heavy lifting. The only thing you have to do is stretch your hand and receive. Hail is hot. Forever is very long. And Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus is the only way to salvation. If you're that person who say, Vlad, you're talking about me. I'm so far from God. I used to know God. Or maybe you've never been in a relationship with the Lord. It's, it's, it's very new for you. But you know that today you need to make the decision. If you're one of these two categories of people, I'm going to count to three. And when I do so, I'm asking you that you raise your hand as a sign of saying, I need to get right with the Lord. One, two, some of you, your heart is beating faster right now because the Lord is talking. Three, if you need to get rid of work with God. Thank you, I see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand. If you need to get right with Jesus. Thank you in the back, I see your hand. Today is the day. I'm going to ask you to do something right now that's bold. I'm going to ask you to quickly come out of your seat and right here, come and meet me right here. Right here, come. Come right here. If you raise your hand, or if you have a friend that raised your hand, you come with them. Come right here, make your way, make your way make your way don't be afraid don't be afraid of what other people will think thank you thank you just come just come right here just come right here just come just come there was two ladies over there that raised their hand you can come right here we're gonna wait for you for just one second so if you want to do that you just come we'll pray for you if you want to do that people are coming people are coming so come this prayer out loud with me whether you're children or whether you're adults 
I'm gonna get on my knees with you. We're just gonna pray this prayer together. I want you guys to say this out loud with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. I surrender my whole life. Come into my heart and make me yours. Come in me, O Holy Spirit. Deliver me from darkness. Deliver me from sin and fill me with your peace and assurance that I am your son, your daughter, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.